where there's heaven, it's where you are. The darkest night. Nearly a year after Tata Taka Uno was attacked and beaten coming out of a New York City subway, the jazz pianist is back on stage, joyfully tickling the ivories like he never left. But less than a year ago, this was hard to picture. No, no, no. Uh, even, even doctor told me, oh, you never may not be able to play piano again. On September 27, 2020, Tata was returning to his Harlem home around 7.30 p.m. when a group of maskless teens were blocking the turnstile exit at the 135th Street subway station. As he tried passing by, one of the teens claimed Tata pushed one of the girls. That totally lie, you know, nonsense reason to attack me. The first that the, uh, I was convinced that there was an Asian hate crime because when uh, somebody was beating me up, calling me Chinese, I'm sorry, this is, you cannot read the broadcast, but this mother, Chinese mother just beat him up. He tried to get away, but Tata says the teens followed him. Many people just watching me, watching mm -hmm. us. So I was screaming, you know, help me, but most of people just ignore me. And uh, finally, uh, eventually, uh, one uh, Spanish lady uh, came to me to help support me. Then she called the police. Tata's injuries included a broken collarbone and bruises to his head, body, and hands. He was rushed to a local hospital and underwent emergency surgery. A metal plate is now lodged into his broken collarbone, which affects his mobility and ability to play the piano. At the time, the NYPD did not classify the incident as a hate crime because they said no anti-Asian remarks were noted in the police report. The NYPD says there are still no arrests and since it happened in the subway, the MTA's transit robbery squad is investigating. Police would not specify whether they have or will eventually classify the attack on Tata as a hate crime. This is how Tata earns his living. The attack threatened it, which happened mere months after he and his wife welcomed a baby boy. How did that make you feel when you heard the doctor say that you might not be able to play? This is your livelihood. Yeah, yeah, I started playing piano uh, since I was four. And uh, when I was nine, I switched to play jazz. So almost the entire of my life, I've been playing piano. Mm -hmm. So this is what I, you know, I'm doing. So it was my kind of panic and also so sad. I didn't, I didn't know what, what to do you know, if I cannot play the piano anymore. You know, I should find another job or you know, how to make a living. Tata had found success in a career he loved so deeply. It lured him to New York City from his native Japan in 2008. I dreamed to play with you know, like a Jimmy Carr, Legend Roy Hargrove, and uh, especially when I joined Roy Hargrove band, I was the only Asian people. Other other people, is, you know, African American. So everybody treated me like uh, their brother. That which was so happy because uh, I I'm not grew, grew up this country, you know, as a, as a jazz musician. Tata's New York family showed up for him. Friend and fellow jazz musician Jerome Jennings started this GoFundMe for Tata. Originally, he'd asked for $25,000 to take care of medical expenses and rent, since Tata is his family's sole breadwinner, and the assault flung his career's future into jeopardy. Not only does he mean some, a, a, a lot to the jazz community here and the music community in the States, but also all over the world. But the response was so warm, they wound up crowdfunding more than $300,000. Tata decided to begin his recovery, returning to his native Tokyo, rehabbing there for five months. He returned to New York City in May. I was so afraid still to this day. I, I, I cannot go to the subway. I cannot ride on the subway. Transportation is still hard for me. Uh, but little by little, you know, get to use to walk around by myself, but it's still hard. Tata and his family moved out of Harlem, beginning the next chapter. Asian people try to help me for mm -hmm. these things. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I was fighting for them too, myself mm -hmm. too. So that was one big motivation to, you know, to back to the stage. Mm -hmm. I never uh, get, give up for this. You know, that, you know, that's why I made it. Please welcome to the stage, 
Michael Karn and Tata Taka Uno, ladies and gentlemen. Which leads us to this triumphant moment. On the day he turned 41, playing alongside the John Pizzarelli Trio at one of New York City's most historic jazz clubs. Talk to me about what it felt like to be back at the Blue Note performing again. It was so amazing feeling because uh, Blue Note where I have so, so many memories with the uh, late blade Roy Hargrove. I was uh, his pianist for the last uh, two years until his passing. So I have performed at the Blue Note stage many times, a bunch of times for two years. Mm -hmm. So I have so many memories there and uh, feel like I oh, finally came back home. So it was great. Later on this fall, Tata will undergo more surgery to remove the metal plate in his shoulder. He has limited motion, but the melody doesn't end there. As a musician, I'm, I play music. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you know, I I'm believing uh, music is a new universal language, you know, that people can relate each other, you know, feel each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I never, never give up to this fight. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Stephanie Officer.